This is JR Tech and Software. Well, hello there. Uh, just a short video. Might not be short, just on the fly video. I'm kind of, uh, you know, um, doing this off the cuff a bit. Um, so, I thought I would share with you what has been happening with my computer recently. You can see, this is my main computer, and it's looking a little different. Now, I know that you haven't seen the computer much um, in this past year, but if you saw my update video that I uh, posted about a year ago, um, I was rocking Zubun 2 um, with the Axis C desktop, and now I'm on Linux Mint. Why? Well, I thought I'd share the story with you. So, um, after a while here on my computer here, I started to really notice it being, um, the boot up time being slow and some other thing about just general storage being slow. So I decided to, um, get an NVMe SSD to really speed things up and to also, um, increase storage here. And I believe it's in here. No, it's not. I'm trying to find, there it is, system information. And and I did not mean to do that. Uh, actually, a better thing would be into, into GNOME Disk Utility here. Um, so you can see here, this is my NVMe SSD here. Got a flat partition. This is my main partition. This is one, a one terabyte Western Digital Blue NVMe SSD. And things are so much better on here. Um, the only thing is, I... I've had a lot of issues. I got this at NVMe SSD about, it's almost a week ago now, as on here is when I started installing it on the 25th of May. I'm recording this on the 29th. And from there I uh, decided to install um, Zubuntu 2204, which is a new version just released about a month ago. Um, and so yeah, and I installed that. Um, and I'll find there's some other details and I'm not going to do the entire story like in detail on that because I'd be talking for a solid hour or so. Um, but yeah, so on there I installed um, X Ubuntu Zubuntu 22.04. Um, but I, and I really started like configuring everything the next day here on the 26th. But, um, it started crashing randomly, just like in the middle of things. It, the desktop would lock up, and it became to where, like, it would just lock up even before I could get to the desktop. Like, I reboot the computer, I log in, and before I could even get to a usable desktop, it would lock up. And I also, uh, I don't know if OBS will capture this, but if I go. Yeah, I couldn't log into the TTY. I don't know if you saw that. Um, but if you did there, I couldn't do that either. I don't think you could actually say that because that's not running x -org, but that's beside the point. Um, I, so yeah, I couldn't I'll even log into TTY, so I couldn't run updates. I couldn't do any diagnostic thing. So um, from there, I decided to reinstall Zubuntu. Same thing happened the next day, the 27th here. Um, same issue, so I'm like, okay, this is obviously a recurring thing, um, probably a Zubuntu thing or just an Ubuntu thing in general, maybe some new, with a new update, isn't playing nicely with my hardware and I just can't really do anything about it because, like I said, I couldn't even get into the system to fix anything. So I decided over the next couple of days to try some other things. So I believe from there I decided, you know what? I wouldn't mind doing running Linux Mint to be honest, um, but because um, Linux Mint solid proper here is based on Ubuntu and Ubuntu is kind of what's giving me the problems I have now I was having, um, I decided to go to Linux Mint Debian edition which is based on Debian. And so I went on there and there's a couple things. Now first of all, um, if I'm going to show you my grub config here. So if I cd into slash etc slash default and a less a grub here, this is my grub configuration file. Um, you can see here that I have quite a few things added to my 
rub command line length default. So um, essentially what this does is it's passing arguments to the Linux kernel when it's starting the kernel, essentially. So, it, and the main thing here is PCI equals no MSI. So essentially what was happening is when, like, when I booted the system, I was getting a bunch of errors. I'm going to make sure that OBS is still recording. Yeah, because TTY I messed up. Um, but anyways, it was getting a bunch of errors. Um, and it was actually, it was like maybe 20 errors per second. Um, some about PCI and it might be my um, wireless card was causing it. I don't know. Um, and essentially it was because it was logging all that. It was filling up my log on that a live disk like really fast um and so um it eventually ran out of space in the middle of install and when you have absolutely no space left like zero bytes available on a linux system it it that's really not good it's just gonna stop working on like outright and so um i couldn't get through the install process. Like it would be midway through and it would just hang because there was no space left on the live disk. And I tried that multiple times. I tried different ISOs um, of the, of, I tried re-downloading it and re-burning it multiple times. And I think I might have toasted one of my um, USB disks or and also a um, SD card in the process of doing all that. Um, Yeah, and I I eventually figured it out. If you um add this argument here, it's going to take care of that. But there was another issue that came up. Um, because now I got it all installed now because I the install one crashed and this was now note that I moved on to Debian, like Debian proper, and there's my next issue. This monitor is its native resolution is 1336 by 768. And, um, but nothing could understand that I have the hardware necessary and this is using integrated graphics and Intel integrated graphics are built into the Linux kernel. But for whatever reason, I couldn't get anything to understand to use 1336 by 768. Instead, I stuck on 1280 by 720 or 1280 by 768 actually I think was what the resolution was um, but anyways it would use that and that looked horrible because especially because that was a different aspect ratio that aspect ratio is 4 by 3 where this aspect ratio is supposed to be 16 by 9 so it was everything was stretched in a horizontal direction on my monitor it was terrible I would not be able to work with that um, and so I tried a couple things. I tried to force um, Xorg, which is a display server, um, to um, display things in the native resolution of 1336 by 768. Um, and I, I tried multiple times and I failed because um, I kept on getting running into one issue that I, no matter what I tried, I could not get away, which was like X Rand R, which is like the what controls like the the display? I I at least think um, X Rand R. Um, it would be an error with that, and it would say like unable to like find gamma resolution or something um, for my display here. And I looked around the line, and a few of you all said that they had a solution that none of them worked for me, and that was this. Um, you could uncomment this and grub again. Um, to um, force it into that, um, but I, I found out that worked, but only for the bootloader, not for the rest of the system. And then also add this argument. This um, The graphics driver for my um, thing here is um, if I LSPCI, um, or no, um, there was like another command that I ran. Ran, but my graphics driver was something like this. So um, if I added that, I was it was supposed to um, make like convince something that um, the driver is loaded or 
be able to unlock other functions of the driver or something I don't actually completely understand what it does, but it was supposed to help with the situation. And um, it didn't. <laughs> so I went back to LMDE, got the same issue, um, and I fixed the whole like big error thing once again with this. Um, but then still had the issue with um, the display. And then I hopped on to Linux Mint proper. And like I said before, I at first I didn't want to go to Linux Mint proper because it was based on Ubuntu and that's where I was having that issue. Um, but Linux Mint proper version 20 is based off of the old LTS I was running earlier. Um, um, Linux Mint 20, um, it runs on Ubuntu 20.04. Um, coming up here, we're probably going to get the release of uh, Linux Mint 21, which will be based on 2204, but this is still based on 2004. Um, so I figured it would be fine. And I've only been rocking this. Um, if I go into uptime, um, and I want P, the P argument here, and you can see here, um, it's been up for about an hour and nine minutes, so I haven't been running in long enough to see if there's any issue. And I'm really hoping that there isn't an issue. Um, but with this older version, this was what it was running before, like when I first installed operating like Zubuntu um, on this about a year ago, and it worked just fine. So I'm pretty certain that um, things should be working fine now. Another thing that um, made me okay with running Ubuntu, the Ubuntu proper version of Linux Mint here um, was that it would be um, Ubuntu 20.04 and Linux Mint 20 here are going to be supported until 2025, whereas Ubuntu 20.04 is only going to be supported till um, around this time next year. Um, and I get it with a smaller dev team, like, you're not going to want to, like, have to maintain, um, that co code base for the next, for the next two years, but that did kind of drive me away from it in the end, um, because I don't want to go through this whole thing <laughs> in, in a year, um, but, um, when it's support until 2025, that gives me three more years. So I'm just going to rock this for a while. Um, eventually, once um, Linux Mint 22 comes out, that'll be based on 24.04. Um, I'll be fine with updating to that. And of course, I'll give it time, of course, to <sighs> update. And hopefully, all those like, bugs that are crashing the system um, will be worked out. And it, it might have ended up been this um bug here that this kind of fix um hopefully but yeah um so yeah sorry for those of you that don't know linux none of that probably makes any sense to you but it's been a wild few days and i thought i would post a video about it because it's mildly interesting oh and um by the way i didn't finish the story yet um when i uh did Ubuntu proper here, even here, um, I still had that display issue. And the fix, of course, none of those fixes worked, um, not that I saw on the internet, on the, um, internet, but the thing that did work was installing a new kernel. Something as simple as that. Now, I'm glad that I was on, um, the the like mainline Ubuntu version do this because it, it provide this nice kernel stool which makes it really easy to update a kernel whereas Debian I don't think that was going to happen but I updated to the latest one here 5.13 originally it was rocking uh, 5.4 here um, so and that that just worked the, uh, as you can see here this well OBS is upscaling it to be 20 1080p, but um, my monitor here is rock, um, what I'm seeing here is uh, 1336 by 768, which is great. So yeah, anyways, um, yeah, I thought I would tell the story um, because yeah, if anyone else has that issue, update the kernel um, for sure, and that'll probably help you. It helped me. 
Um, it was a very frustrating couple of days um, trying to get something to install. Um, I wasn't heading back to Windows ever because even when I go back to Windows and I use Windows, like I've gotten so used to my workflow here on Linux that it would be rough moving back to Windows, to be honest. Um, and yeah, it's just not something I want to do. Um, so yeah, I so either way, I was staying on Linux here. But uh, yeah, I thought I'd just, I just know those issues I had and how I fixed them and uh, get some content out there because my channel is being starved of content right now. But anyways, yeah, so I'm rocking an NVMe SSD right now. I do recommend it. Um, if you don't have money or if your hard drive um, work is working just fine for you, you know, um, in spinning rusty trust, um, I would still be running a hard drive, um, to be honest. Um, but I eventually the appeal of something as fast as an NVMe SSD um, just got to me and I wanted to get one so yeah um, so if you want to know something a little faster um, it will cost you about 100 bucks um, but it is worth it because it is much better um, and as you saw on my um, GNOME Discs um, utility here I have like a full terabyte. I still have that hard drive in there rocking. Um, that's what my home um, directory is on. My home session is on the um, old hard drive. So I have a full terabyte to work with, which is amazing. Um, and yeah, so I have much more storage in here. I'm very happy with my decision. So yeah, uh, I don't know when this video was, but I, whatever it was, I hope you guys enjoyed. If you did, hit that like button. And if you like my other content, then be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.